Awesome. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Calvin from uh, Lindsay Auto Body. Uh, we're going to be doing the Instagram takeover here for Body Shop Business. Going to give you a little walkthrough um, and go over our DCR model here um, and all the fun stuff that goes into it. Yep. So this location here uh, is in Columbus, Ohio, the Lindsay location. And you can see we're right here in our front reception area where we kind of start the ball with our customers. And we'll get you through the store, show you some of our processes, what we're all about, just the daily, what goes on in the daily, just the daily items here <laughs> at Lindsay. Yes, so, absolutely. Do you want to yes, take off here? Yeah. yeah. Um, so from the front receptionist area, as soon as the vehicle actually comes in and the customer comes into our doors, um, this is the first promising area of the whole process, right? Um, very, very big in customer service. You know, we really want to seal that deal as soon as that customer comes in and show pride when we're doing it as well. So when the customer's coming in for their appointments, um, we actually have a wall rack organized um, for that specific customer. Um, and this takes place at the end of each week. Um, we call and confirm and make sure that everyone is showing up all the time. And we print out their schedules Monday through Friday. Um, and we also, when the vehicle and the customers are coming to pick up, we also have this completed rack, wall rack here too for them. So we have everything all ready for them as soon as they walk in the door. So we're not saying, oh, hey, Miss Smith, you know, when was your appointment day and time? We're ready to go as soon as they're coming in to drop off. Um, from that area, um, when they do come in, we would go right over here um, to our pretty much our drive lane aisle where the customer would come right into um, and see the whole shop as soon as they do. So we would then hit the garage for them. The garage would come up, they would pull right in, and this is where we would kind of take the initiative to go and look over the vehicle and give them the best professional opinion. Um, really, we want them to see the whole shop and really what we're entitled to. Um, the cleanliness, the, the process, the, how the production really goes around it um, is really the seal of the deal of it. Um, very, very clean environment. We want to keep it clean for our customers, and sometimes, you know, that's a, that is the selling point of it as well. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Uh, simple visuals, right? When you walk into our front and reception area, we have the big glass windows because we want to showcase what we have going on. Um, to when we get them in here, we're really what you know, walking and talking about their vehicle, giving them our opinion, discussing certifications, our processes, what to expect while they're going through this, this hardship. In the meantime, they can see what's going on with other vehicles that are currently in process. So it really gives the full picture of, hey, it, it's an inviting environment, right? They can see what's going on. It's an open environment. What's clean, it's organized. It's a really a big selling point for DCR in our model. Right. And then um, when we are done with when talking to them, going over their concerns, and um, they're ready to go, um, they're able to just drive right out of this big door right here. So kind of an incoming, exiting type of deal, or if they feel comfortable, they can back right up on out. So really easy, simple process for the customer when they do come in and, and want to leave as well. So um, from that standpoint, if the vehicle was dropping off, um, we would then move it into our uh, tree washing center, kind of get identify all the related damages and prior damage, which we'll walk through. Um, as soon as it fits right over here to our left-hand side, um, this is going to be our detailed center, um, where the vehicles would come in, they would get pre-washed, we would go over everything to the nitty-gritties of the um, that detail, making sure that the wheels are clean, all the dirt's off of the vehicle, everything is really clean for us. We're going into our next step, um, which would be in the we do throw them on skates over here as well, which we can show you. Yeah, I mean, every, everything that we have going on here, right, we're prepping that vehicle for in, incoming into our process. It's really decreasing, right, removing silicone, any contaminants. If it went off the road and there's mud on it, if it hit a deer and there's some other, item other on items it. on it, <laughs> right? So those vehicles come through and into this early stage of our process, the keys travel with it. We're using all these visuals, whether it's up above here, above all of our lighting, or down here across the board. You'll see different flags throughout the process today, uh, different visuals, different hats. A lot of those things we'll talk about. But this early stage, right, everything that we're doing, there's a reason behind it, and it builds for that next item downstream. Right, so after we've completed that pre-wash, we're going to then jump down into pre-op, right, repair planning, 
and that's where we're going to start the staging process. We do utilize uh, Smart Express for all of our calibrations and scanning, so they'll actually walk through that part of the repair planning process to make sure we are dialing in everything that is needed for that vehicle. And then once that vehicle is also disassembled, we'll utilize them in what we call our hard copy huddle to verify, okay, hey, is additional scans and calibrations needed throughout the process? So, and this is actually where, where that process begins. You can see just four visuals right lined up here, different flags throughout the process. Just our board of vehicles that we have queued up and are coming in. And then the keys will travel with that from that pre-walk board to this keyboard here, right? So everything's moving downstream. Uh, so if you want to come talk yeah. about what we're doing here and What's yeah. going on? So the, this is our pre-op. This is where the vehicle is really doing that strategic disassembly to it, um, really identifying all the related damage to it, identifying it, mapping the vehicle out, doing the car line or point X measurements, which we'll get into in the uh, later on. I'm showing you how we perform that to make sure there is, you know, no upper body damage going on to it. Basically, to identify it prior to actually getting to our full frame rack and set up the measure to see if it's actually been swayed at all in the upper or lower or really what's going on with it. So we'll move into the pre-op section here. Uh, as you see, we got this one getting disassembled at the moment. Uh, the vehicle all mapped out pretty much on what's going on with it, where the damage is located and all that fun stuff. Uh, this is where we're, we're taking it into consideration of really the full in depth of it, of, you know, what it's going to take to get that vehicle back to that manufacturing guideline. Even from printing the work instructions out, placing them on the windshield of the vehicle, so that technician taking them off is obviously, they have the procedures here just in case they do have a quick question or anything on that vehicle and how to get that specific part off or what it needs to get it taken off. Yeah, so this is that 100% you know, disassembly planning that repair. Uh, the current term, we've just been like, we're building that kit, right? For it to travel through the rest of our process. So down to the last clip, down to the last procedure, down to the last sublet operation, it's all being planned throughout this part of our process. Really you know, dialing in, you know, taking multiple team members from different areas of the process uh, through that repair and planning out different mapping, right. okay. where are we going to take this, what's we finish, what do we have to do, to, you know, uh, what needs to move, what right. we, you know, what's going to happen once it goes through structural, right. or build down in, the, in our process, right. uh, body repairs are finished, masking, items, things out of the way, all those items are being addressed currently at this point, so it's like you're walking out of a I, walking out of Ikea with a, a box to build, right? Right. That's what this is. And we'll show you that, how we do that team. We really do a team puddle that's, that's going to include that, you know, that structural technician, that repair technician, that finish technician. They're all going to be over here. We're going to huddle around the vehicle and really identify if there's any other necessary items to get out of the way for that structural repairs, that body repairs, or the repair. What, it, what it's going to take for it to get that vehicle through the line and first time quality so there's no hassle with any other technician that's getting involved into it. Um, so you can see all the floor is labeled out as well for any section of the process too. Um, that's a great visual for our team, right? To really identify where items go. So as soon as they are done using that item, they're putting that item right back to where it's actually standardized at. The, the scanning and the point X measurements, everything's all labeled out on where it goes. Um, to even how the how we take the photos to the vehicle as well, we even have them captured here, um, just so everyone is on the same boat and knows exactly what to do. Just in case that one of the team members weren't available to explain how to do that, it's all right there and hands reach for them. Um, that's, the, that's the ideal situation of it. You don't ever want someone to say, "Hey." This one person's not available. Uh, what do I do? You know that next step. We train them on how what next steps to take during the whole. Thing. Do you have any questions or anything? No questions or anything. There's there's some people on here. A bunch right. of uh, yeah, the support team and any, yeah. Any feedback? <laughs> <laughs> any questions? Any feedback? We're we're glad to answer anything. Um, you know, please please interact with us. We, we love answering. So if you guys do have any questions, please let us know. Any areas that you want to see more of, you know, we want to we want to get some feedback. So let us know. So we'll move on. Um, we'll go, like I said, we'll go into the um, 
the full huddle with all the technicians. We'll get to that when the vehicle is completely disassembled and we have that complete repair plan generated, um, which it might be in the um, afternoon one, but we'll see. Um, we'll move on to uh, jumping the parts here, yeah, the right parts. while we're building the kits, everything that's involved in it. Uh, so once we've you know, left that area, we're building you know, something as simple as this smaller repair, right? right process right so general what just a lot of people have this concept right reusable parts are nice right replacement parts on the bottom and then down to you know what we're labeling with our chip clip bags and everything so it's got the ro the part of the vehicle and then down to okay sides tops just parts of that bumper right in this case to specifically itemize this so that when it does hit the end of our process it makes it easier someone else can actually jump in I guess if, if we want to take a quick second, right, what allows us to build this, right, we can show an inventory table yep. um, as we put one together. Right, so right here is what we consider our inventory table, and that's how we go about that bagging process, right, down to our different stickers. You know, it's a mat overlay of a vehicle that you can actually organize fasteners for, right? From here, then we're, we're you know, from here, purple sticker, right? Go right from here onto our chip clip, onto the cart, right? And then in reverse, this happens in reassembly. Right? We have all these available through the pre-op repair plan side of it, and then through the reassembly side of it as well. Right? So that's being built as that cart we had set up over there. That then as we get parts in, we'll mirror match, move that vehicle into process. It can jump into a couple different areas, right, uh, that we have set up and staged, but really we're building that kit for it to make it to that next part of our process. Whether we're still waiting on confirmation for a couple items, or it's going through our structural build down process, or if it's going into what we call ready inventory, which means it's completely ready to go. It's gonna enter into our process and it's gonna make its way all the way through and back to the customer within a given amount of days, right? Then uh, even going on to our, this is what we call an R and I table. Uh, this table really identifies that repair planner that's going over the vehicle or, and that technician that's taking the vehicle apart. They're placing all the R and I remove and reinstall parts and they think that they're good, placing them on the top of the R and I tables. And then that's when our, one of our repair planners would then go take those parts off of this and then put it on the part cart after they double check and verify it because you know you always run into those situations sometimes when you're getting the vehicle all back together unfortunately some miscellaneous clips are missing or there was a tab broken off of a side retainer or a bumper you know a bumper bracket you know something will happen you know and sometimes that technician won't catch it all the time so we came up with the design of coming up with these r and i tables so that you know that technician places on there they've double checked and verified it then that repair planner that's overseeing that vehicle and following that complete vehicle through the process is then taking that part, placing it on the parts part, and they're double checking and verifying it too, just to make sure that it's good to go. Obviously, you know, miscellaneous things happen throughout the process, but to really identify it up front and try to double check and verify things for a clean flow through it, and first time quality is always the best way to do it, so you don't have any stoppers going on. Um, so this, the top portion is the R and I. So these parts are all good. This bottom rack here is going to be all the broken parts. So it's an easy visual for that repair player to see what's kind of going on with it too. So super cool. Um, I feel like it's a great necessity to it. Um, especially myself, you know, I want to double check and verify that everything's good to go. Cause I don't want that vehicle ever coming back to me. I want to make sure it flows. I want to make sure it goes right back to the customer with ease. So. Go. You guys, uh, there's a question on yeah. here. It says, uh, it's Friday. Do you guys send most of your workout on Friday, like most shops, in Monday, out Friday? Um, I, would, I would say we really try to game plan for an easy flowing day for Fridays. Um, we try to set up targets that we get deliveries a day, uh, really, to make, to make that end of the week way much easier on our technicians. Too. Um, so yeah. I don't know if you have any thought for that. No, I mean, we always say in our line of work, the process doesn't know what day of the week it is, right? Right. So that's what we try and game plan around what we plan on. Now, outside of when customers are available to pick up their vehicle, I think you will see more of that towards the end of the week. 
Right. But that vehicle then is what we consider curved. It's ready to go at any point as soon as that customer is ready to pick up. Right. Right. But yeah, generally speaking, you know, I think we just see more customers available towards the end of the road to pick up. Right. With their schedule. Um, with their schedule. So hopefully that met the answer. And if you have any more, please ask. Eddie, where do you want to take them next? Yeah. So as we walk through the process, uh, just generally speaking, if we were to have all these parts, everything is here. In this case, it's just simple grill items. This then, right, we would review the paperwork that travels with this, you know, using the visuals and the, make that decision, okay, what part of the process is that going to next? And it could be, like I said earlier, it could be a temporary hold situation. Uh, as we verify a couple items, it could be into our hill dome structural, or it could go to our ready inventory, which is just ready to go. That item here, and we can then just, uh, jump in the build down. I guess we'll jump in the build down to film it. So, our build down process is going to be over here. Um, the same guy who asked that question says he wants to get into a wreck just so he can have you guys fix his car. <laughs> don't suggest it, but we would be the best place, honestly. <laughs> we don't want to see that. But if you do need us, we're here for you. <laughs> This is where we have our build down, structural repairs, mechanical, all these operations. It's still part of what we consider pre-op, right? So we're building that vehicle down just to get it ready to move into our process. Or by uh, design, it's you know to get it to a sizable repair so that we can create flow throughout our whole U-shaped production line, right? So if we want, if in our environment, if we want something cycling through at a given moment liner right so welders as well with quick 42 set up here uh, vast majority of what we work on is on an Acura uh, probably in the 90 percent uh, range so we don't need a large huge full rack uh, so the quick 42 fits us perfectly uh, and it gives us a lot of to work with and quick and easy, right? Quick right. 42, good piece of equipment. Absolutely. Um, and then just the cartronic, right? All of our measuring, this is standard set up here, just like many of the others. That said, we just have our twin posts if we need to get a vehicle lifted up in the air. And we do have flat bases and flat spells as well right off that you guys can work with with in ground lifts from CMAN. Yeah. So, which we can show them the ground yeah. lift right over here. Yeah. Uh, we have pretty much almost almost every single bay is included with an in-ground lift. Um, no offhand, how many do you know that we have? Nine total. Nine total in-ground lifts for our technicians. Um, really super convenient for them. We want to make it an ease for them, we really do. Uh, because getting up and off of the ground, obviously, is it's not the most ideal situation anymore uh, at all. I wouldn't want to keep on getting up and off the ground. So to make it easier for them, that's kind of what we want to do. Um, so we integrated this from CMAC, um, especially when we open up. The guys here love it. Guys and girls love it. So um, never had any type of complaints with it at all. Um, it's a super, super cool advancement in a type of way. Because not every body shop's going to have these in-ground lifts stationed in almost every single day for the technicians to use frequently. Um, so it's super cool. So, yeah, it allows us to get it up off the ground, right? We're not rolling around on the ground. Generally, we keep it very clean, right? But it does create that ease to, you know, in a good environment to work in. Absolutely. Um, you know, Keeping the technicians clean, too. A lot of what you see in the facility with, you know, with that CMAC design and, and setup, um, we can really dig into it in the next part of the live session. Right. But um, it really allowed us to have a great facility to work in. Yes. Again, and everything's all stationary. Um, all the symbols are all up top here too as well. Um, this is located in every single one of our facilities. It's all gonna be labeled with what system it is. So system free assembly is always gonna be up top above what bay it is. System free up is gonna go all the way down. And then system body repair is always at the end. Um, so it's super cool. It's very standardized. So if you were going to a different location, um, you would know exactly what's going on. It's the same exact process center environment. So it allows that one person to work in another area. 
um, especially that if a technician needed to go to one of our other facilities and say if they're a structural technician, um, they're, everything's going to be set up the same exact way for that technician to go to. They're going to be able to click right on, really not have to ask too many questions unless it's a different frame rack. Then they might have some questions to answer. But everything is all set up standardized um, throughout all of our facilities. So it's super, super cool. Um, and super, super clean in a way too, because you don't have to retrain that technician on what to do in a different facility when that other facility needs any type of help, if they do need help. Right. So, I guess we'll, we'll just venture down through our line here, um, explain the repair process, the body repair stage, and then give you a quick glance of our, our CMAC line and all that fun stuff.
minimize it just wandering and traveling. Um, you can see it, it's very visual. You can take a look into a different area of production and see where we're at for the day. It's a great, it's a great visual for our team. It really is, right? Just, you know, as Ed was saying, you know, it's a they get set up as visual instead of looking at our screen for the visual as well, which that's all there too. Um, but shop floor visuals is a huge, huge portion of consistent flow. It really is. Um, you can see we have all of our cycles identified um, for it. They already have their number one for tomorrow identified too. Or for Monday, sorry about that, um, going into next week, so we know where we're going to start at, and, and then we know we still need to follow it, too, with a two and a three and a four, right? um, so we can identify those. So identifying them sooner in the process makes it easier, it makes it more flowing, too, because we're already identifying the cycles for that next day. Um, you know, that, that refinished technician that identifying it, he knows what he's getting into, and he knows how his line should be set up and what he would need resource-wise, too, right? to make sure that you can actually get it completed that day. Because we want to make sure that they're set up. Um, we don't want anybody struggling or anything like that. We really want a resource where it's actually needed. Um, that's why we're a big team environment here. We really are um, looking at our indicators and making sure our visuals are set up. Um, because that same technician might not be in that same area that next day. They really might not. Um, and that's kind of what we've done really good here. Um, is identifying really our visuals and where we need to work at. It's really ideal. That's why keeping the shop visuals accurate and up to date is going to be the most successful thing you can do. Right. Yeah. yeah, that team environment allows us really to just dial in yeah. um, you know, how we're going about the day and really meet our customers' demands or you know, meet, I guess, our, our inventory demands. Right. If we're bottlenecking in an area, we may slow down an area of our pr production so that we can really break that bottleneck in There was uh, one other question: Is the is the uh, tech shortage tech shortage affecting you guys like every other shop? I, uh, I mean, I think we all can realize that there's a shortage of technicians. Um, I think the big thing that we've done is we've started a lot of in-house training, a lot of training that we're developing, whether it's from a technical standpoint, yeah, and that really out for training as well. We're really just you know, realizing the situation that it is in the industry. How can we best develop people within the organization, whether it's coming out of a trade school or tech school, um, and then just really giving them all the training, as much training as they want, putting them on a career path for success. Right? That's really what's led, led us to see it. You know, I would say we're not affected by it, but uh, it's allowed us to really continue to produce it. Yeah, we have a we have a lot of technicians that you know obviously when they first joined us they were only in one part of the process, um, you know starting from a detail position to you know going to the prep line maybe you know helping out in prep you know getting them with some of the um, I would say more advanced technicians and training them really on how to do this certain step of it. Um, just because if that area was slow, they would be able to come over and help assist on you know maybe buffing a panel, prepping a panel, you know getting that person over there and making them have a career advance is always ideal, you know, especially if they want it. So um, that's one thing that we're really good with here um, because in our in our meetings and our other items, um, we're asking them, you know, like, hey, you know, what was that next step that you would want to take? You know, what, how can we help you get that? You know, that type of deal because that tech shortage is, it's, you know, unfortunately, um, at the moment, nobody would like to work. Um, I wish they would come back to work, so we're in a, we're in a predicament, so hopefully that changes. Right. Um, but making our employees, you know, that career advancement for them is, is the best thing that we can, um, especially in-house, because they already know the, the process and how the stand is set up. Um, so training them in other areas is, is pretty good to me. Um, makes them feel like they're, they're better as well, you know, and they're advancing throughout their thing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities for them. You know, our environment, we're not specific.
specific to one area of our process, right? A body technician isn't always going to be a body. A painter is not always going to be the paint. But uh, a structural technician may not even be performing build down structural uh, that day. You may actually be helping uh, in disassembly, getting parts in other areas of the process. It might be reassembly. So, with that said, you know, a lot of our we're a very versatile team and the work are able to work in a lot of different areas throughout the day. They are, you know, really have that ability. Yeah, we have a great team. Uh, it, it allows for, I guess, newer team members to really work. We work with maybe someone who is more skilled in a certain area of the production. Or if we're needed in that area, they may be spending that time with that technician in an area where they've never been, so they're learning and so on. Walking through the line real quick, I guess. Go over it. So, um, this is where everything's all set up with, um, and we'll probably be the best at explaining all the big booth and all that other items with it and how we're set up in there. Um, but this is the pretty much the home of the home of the C Mag paint booth, honestly, it really is. Um, yeah. So, if you want to go over. Yeah, so this whole setup, obviously the whole shop is designed with C-Mac, uh, but this is the mix room, right? We're spraying Sickens Auto Wave, right? Uh, Axe and product. Uh, from here, this is obviously our, just our general mix room. But here, you know, we have everything set up to go. Through the system here, you know, I guess we should have a better view of it. We'll probably be from the other side just showing them just the size and how it's laid out. Obviously, this is the spraying chamber, right? The spray tron, a part of the Comitron. Uh, that part of the dry tron, the Comitron here. So, a lot of infrared curing throughout that process, direct heat to those panels versus heating up a whole boot to a certain degree. Uh, it allows us actually to accelerate cycles, right? A lot faster curing time throughout the whole process. So, whether it's flash clear and color, we are able to take that vehicle through this about half the time, right? Our cycle time, I guess by, by math, this is able to produce 18 cycles a day, 16, 18 cycles a day. Uh, so we, we currently aren't producing that amount, but we have that, have that ability with this equipment. And I would say that would be, as we're staging our line, everything is flowing through, right? A lot of times this is where you're constricted, right? You know, for you know, as many cycles as you can throughout a day, this booth has all the capability in the world, so it's us being able to keep up with that to be able to produce everything prior to this, this system. And then, if you're able to produce that much, right, having it come through reassembly and being able to get those cars reassembled is in the same kind of manner, right? right? It's all about flow, it's all about consistency, which also ultimately makes us predictable what we're gonna produce. Right? So, uh, but the CMAX system, having all that we can dive into it later, probably show a curing, uh, part of the curing process. Uh, we're currently walking through that actual finish about the time and then showing it as it comes out as well, right? So does anyone have any questions? There is a question on here. Uh, supplement is probably a dirty word to you guys, even <laughs> with your thorough process. Is a supplement sometimes inevitable? Yeah, I mean... So we're not perfect, right? We, we run into things here and there um, throughout the day. And supplements are rework, right? Right. We're putting in all that work, all that effort. Uh, I would generally say a supplement on our end is for not so much as additional items. It's just truly getting compensated for what truly needs to be done to that vehicle. Meaning, you know, we now have that documentation of that vehicle being. Everything done. We could now have the documentation of that panel being installed. Uh, we now have that documentation of the vehicle being on the, the frame rack, uh, welding operations, test welds. Uh, you know, we are building all that information up front. That's that roadmap for that vehicle throughout the whole process. Uh, 
but at some point so that supplement is really just showing them that additional evidence that was done throughout the process. And, uh, we'll, and we'll run into that too. Uh, we have a complete evidence package we call it, it's our DCR claims portal. Um, we pretty much send it out to all of our insurers. Everything that's linked to that repair is going to be that evidence file for that claim. Which we'll go over, we'll give you guys that uh, great goody details um, in the second round of it um, and show you how kind of how we operate here. Um, as everyone else knows, that's probably on this video. Um, you know, everyone's pretty much in house now. All the all the appraisers and adjusters are all in house. We limit that to here. Um, we really don't want them coming out here to take a look at the vehicle. We build that evidence package for them um, so they can actually complete that. Right. So um, well, that's kind of how, how we handle the supplement yeah. items too, because um, all the photos, documentation, invoices is all in that complete evidence package for them to review safe for their handling and all that fun stuff. Right. So, well, it minimizes the door, you know, door traffic. We're you know, really focusing on a vehicle and what, the, what is our repair planning process, right? You're in the middle of something, maybe you're researching a specific procedure, um, and then all of a sudden the adjuster will come in and tap you on the shoulder, right, and want to look at something with you. So by not having them specifically in the facility, it allows us to stay focused on that vehicle, one for our for the customer and then the other for ourselves, right? We're, uh, it allows us to get that evidence dialed in right. without distraction and remove any distraction that we can. And that is that whole part of that process and now followed by claims for them. Um, another question, you guys kind of touched on it, but they say one of the biggest bottlenecks happens at the booth. How does your process avoid this? Um, I guess at the booth, like prior to, right, leading up to it, or is it a reassembly bottleneck uh, following pain? So at the booth, our ability here is to keep up with what the booth can produce, right? Uh, more of a traditional environment or a traditional booth setting. Uh, it's really about how can you maximize those four or five cycles a day. Uh, here we don't have that construction. It's about us creating that consistent flow, uh, seeing it more in that reassembly side of it is, is where we tend to see that bottleneck. Uh, right? So we're producing all this inventory. Right? If we're not aware of what's going on and not looking at our visuals, we can quickly bottleneck right? um, you know, reassembly. So that works. From our standpoint, it's typically more like downstream without the loop, uh, oh, yeah. and you know, leading up to it, we can, we can produce and paint vehicles all day long, uh, but it's our ability to pre create a consistent flow, right? Because then if you are accelerating, right, your, your paint line, you're bottlenecking, and then you're also gapping the line upstream, right? Are you able to bring as many vehicles in as what you're producing out for so. Um. Another one, kind of similar, but where are you, where are your most commonly constrained areas, and what improvements have you made there? How do you get them to stick? I'd say I mean reassembly, right, would be a bottleneck of ours or constraint. Um, really, we've done a handful of different things, right? Whether it's shifting resources soon enough or early enough, uh, or just discussing what we consider stoppers. Uh, Miss Park, uh, Mr. Tanner, Miss Cliff, uh, just little things that you may run into uh, that we completely you know, do our best to try to avoid upstream. Yeah. Uh, so reassembly, you know, leading up to it. Uh, the other side of that is parts right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. Right? sure for everyone, unfortunately. Uh, we touched on it, but we have read, what we consider ready inventory, having the ability to have that ready inventory. Right. If we can't get the parts, we don't have that ready inventory. So we, you know, discuss throughout the day with a lot of people, you know, how can we solve this, this problem? How can we get ready inventory? Uh, yesterday we had a really strong day in that side of it. So today, pre op is less of a focus of ours as a team. Right? Resources can be wherever it's needed within that line if you have the inventory ready to come in. I would say um, if you are experiencing stoppers. Um, you know, miss parts, things like that, um, writing them down, discussing it as a team. That's the that's the biggest solution right. we found to it. Yeah. Um, really, because then everyone's on board. It's not just that person that's overseeing that folder, not just that one technician that's handling it. It's everyone as a team now is involved, and now we know that root cause of it. 
how do we tackle it as a team to get it wrapped up? Yeah, I mean, an open discussion, um, you know, moving the blame game, just identifying, okay, how did this happen? Is there a way we can eliminate it? Um, ultimately, it will allow us to succeed and be in a better spot. You're not going to have that. Uh, build up with the people there. So, um, addressing it, uh, that's the process here, is right? How can we get better at just on a daily basis? Always looking for that next. Yeah, that can help us be able to predict and predict uh, what we have going on. Um, you know, as far as that, the R and I table, right? This is a good example of that. You know, why are we missing Vegas? Right? So now it's okay. We separated those when we're moving them from the vehicle to two different shelves prior to it even getting to a part center. Like three, right. really three different eyes right. taking a look at it too. Three separate people taking a look at it too. So. That's what we try to do. We try to eliminate it so it's creating that consistent flow. I know it's a repetitive item, um, but that's what you want. It's what you want flowing through your shop. Is that consistent flow? You don't want to stop. You don't want to go back to that vehicle at all. You really don't. You want to make sure it flows through. Your shop. All right. Maybe one more question before we break. But are you guys doing scanning and calibration in house? If in house, can we see the space in your shop where you do that? have someone in-house, but it would be Smart Express, right? right. So they're at, located at our facility in uh, the only they will actually flag that vehicle through our check-in process so that they could uh, help perform a pre-scan for right. Smart Express. Then they will indicate just early stages and even by question marks on vehicles what needs to be done, right. and then that's validated through repair planning once that vehicle is disassembled. That, with that said, right behind us here, um, this, these drive aisles here is where the, those calibrations are being performed. So having that space, having a level floor, right, all those things are key. Uh, lighting can play in with all those calibrations as well. So having, having the right area, so we have two drive lanes on both sides of the facility where those can be performed at, uh, depending on which side of the facility the vehicle is coming out of. And that technician performing that scan, he would dictate too, you know, where he needs that perfect calibration to take place at, because a lot of the calibrations, they take a different type of environment as well. Um, so there, there's a ton of pinpoint areas in our production where he can actually perform those calibrations at to actually perform them correctly per that manufacturer too. And then he has all that information located on his laptop and those other items. Um, and then maybe in the second session, if he's comfortable, we'll, you know, we'll get him on board and see see if he would like to do it. I'm not too sure if he'll be up for it, but I can ask and see right. for sure to see if you guys have any questions. Because with the with the way these vehicles are going nowadays, it's it's all about advancements in those that area. Um, and it's it's in a few years, it's going to be a, a complete game changer if it's not a game changer already. Um, especially with, even with the new Honda vehicles that are coming out, even the base models of them, like pretty much are almost all going Honda sensing. So they're really forcing that vehicle to go back to the dealership, which you should, you know, take your vehicle back to the to the dealer or, or a certified center to really get that proper repair completed. I'm not saying other people don't complete it properly, but there's a lot of items in those vehicles nowadays that are very advanced um, that you would think that you wouldn't have to perform it, but you really do have to perform it. There's, you know, there's a percentage out there that a lot of the vehicles, I'm not too sure off the top of my head, it might be around like 60 or 70. Um, things that get like improperly repaired, no calibrations completed, you know, yeah. items like that. So it's crazy nowadays, it really is. So, you know, we're, we're gonna be the leading indicators to it, you know, performing that vehicle correctly. And that's why we have that in-house team to really dictate those calibrations that are maybe needed through the repair process. Yeah. So. Does that answer that question? Yeah. Really, this, this would be that space where that those are all completed at, and then we have someone in public company that stays in house to perform all those things and operations. To, to eliminate any, any setting that vehicle out for the calibrations because you never know how long that vehicle will sit down there for so having that in-house team here on site really kills our cycle time down of just waiting for that vehicle to come back from the dealership or come back from that vendor you send it out to so cool um yeah you guys can probably send it off and Awesome. We'll, we'll, re we'll reconvene at 1 o'clock, I believe. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.
please, any questions, you know, please write them down. You know, we'll connect send with them, them send them in. We'll, we'll review them, we'll answer them. We're really open, so please, you know, anything that you guys have, you know, don't be afraid. Very open gentleman here, so I mean, just let us know what we can do to help you guys out. You guys have any questions about your facility, how it's set up, anything that we can even do, maybe to answer some of your stuff. I mean, just let us know, honestly. So. Well, that I believe uh, it's going to be posted as well, right? So yeah. 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 So anybody that's viewing it after this as well, you know, please feel free to reach out to our DCR systems or body shop business. They can get you in contact with the right person and kind of go from there. So. Um, I think we'll be back at one. So please join in, tell your friends, anybody, share us, do what you gotta do. <laughs>